the brain operating system, uh, it will, you know, we talk about it's the limbic operating system. Some will call it the unconscious, subconscious, the intuitive self, the inner knowing, the ego, whatever they want to call this. But there's a survival system within ourself that is designed to keep us safe. So when we talk about life experiences, now again, when I say life experiences, you could also call it trauma. All right, but for me, trauma means an education about how the world works and what's been introduced into your world, right? So, you know, working with a lot of people and, and helping people heal their bodies. Now we're talking about really documented, real illnesses, real pain, real experiences. And what I do is I go in and clean up their mind. I clean up the brain's system that manifests pain, the same brain system that manifests love, joy, peace, and kindness. So to the brain, uh, trauma is not bad. It just says trauma is, this is how the world works. Now we're going to use this and utilize this. Now what I, I call the, the Olympic operating system, the unconscious, subconscious, etc. We call it the intelligent idiot. And the reason why we say that is because when, when you take an idiot and you show them how to use a knife and it learns to cut everything up, I mean literally everything. They'll cut their own pillow up, their shoes up, their socks up, just because they have this great skill called cutting because you've trained them to do this. Now the brain has what we would call a survival system to keep us alive. So from the survival system, it's gonna have experiences. Say you as a little girl, I mean, you're pretty much a blank slate. I mean, you don't know much about the world. Then your identity and values are created by experiences. Those experiences actually give us a playlist on how we're to operate in the world. So if you have, so like you have um, the, this young man that was working with me, he, he doesn't feel feelings very well, but he's extremely sensitive. By sensitivity is feelings, but it's a physical response. And what happened is when he was a very young child, he had an older sister who was jealous of him, didn't like him. So he, she would put a pill over his face, try to kill him, so to speak, you know. She would push him, she would pick on him, she would cry and then blame him for it. So he was physically abused by a sibling. Now, this would be considered a trauma in some, right. some realms. But in reality, he's learning how to survive in that world. Right, so that's just a learning. And so for his brain to not feel is to keep him alive and keep him so he'll survive. Yeah. So what I always say that the body is the honest expression of unresolved and or resolved emotional experiences, ideas and beliefs. So mm -hmm. the body is just gonna express physically what is inside of the mind? Now, a lot of people, there's a lot of modalities out there say the body keeps the score, and that's not true. The body is an honest expression of what's inside the brain. You change the brain, the body changes. So again, the body is not doing it to you, but consciously, so consciously, we're pretty much dead this side up, but we're aware of what's going on down here. I mean, we know we feel bad. And we focus on the body. The body feels bad. So therefore, my body is making me feel bad, not realizing it's what's up here. My number one commented video on YouTube, and it's video number 72. And that's how to get rid of a headache. And so I, Iris, she was the one who had a headache, right? She had a headache. She volunteered. I pulled her up, and I started dressing the headache. But I wasn't dressing the headache, I was dressing what gave the headache, which is emotional experiences, and it happened to be experience, emotional experiences at work. So, as I started working on this, and we got rid of her headache. Now, people were watching this video, tapping along, and you ought to read the comments. WTF, my headache's gone. Oh my God, it really worked. How did this work? Because people find this, not because of tapping, just because they have a headache, and they're willing to try anything. So how the brain actually works with physical pain is that it has memories of unpleasant emotional experiences. It has memories of getting hurt and your brain will capture these memories, organize it on the cortices 
And then it's like you're talking to your friend, Tammy, on the phone, and your friend's going, <coughs> I got this terrible cold, I got fever, I, got, I feel like crap, I feel like I'm going to die. And then you get off the phone, you actually start to feel like you got the flu too. <laughs> exactly. And the reason is, is because it stimulated our memories of flu, sickness, and illness. Mm -hmm. yep. And like I've seen people who read, um, like they'll read ingredients, you know, because they're super chemical sensitive. They will read the ingredients on a can and see if there's anything she doesn't like. And as she reads it, she can taste it, feel it, and experience it as she reads this. Because this is how the, the, the brain works. It's, it's a, I call it like, it's a, it's, I call it, the brain is like a hypnosis machine. It's, it puts you in a trance. When you think of a bad memory, you go into a bad memory feeling, which is a trance. And that's what our brain does. It gives us states of mind. And when we go to those states, you can go to any, any memory, even now you can close your eyes, remember a pleasant memory. You know, like for example, you remember holding one of your children for the first time. And as you remember that, you start to feel those good feelings. We can do the same thing with pain memories or, or, or any other type of memory. So the brain starts making it real in the body. So that's why the system I use is profoundly effective. I mean, we have documented proof that people with lupus, blood tested proven there, blood tested lupus gone. Hashimoto's disease, blood tested there, Hashimoto's disease, blood tested gone. Those are big ones. We have lots of people with fibromyalgia, you know me, lupus, POTS disease, chemical sensitivities. I mean, some of the worst possible scenarios. And all we're doing is we're going inside the brain and making adjustments and adjusting the unpleasantries. And that's the key.